This is a Minecraft magma cube made out of hundreds of Lego bricks, and if I lift the top of it, it splits into sections to reveal an orange cord just like the in-game mob. And this is me spending hours motorizing a Lego Minecraft silverfish so it can move like in the game. In this video, I made realistic Minecraft mobs out of Lego, and then made them functional to make each one even cooler. Okay, so I have this small magma cube from another set I bought for this video, and it has a really satisfying mechanism that lets it split into sections when you lift the top. I want to scale this design up to make an even bigger version, but I have basically none of any of the colors or pieces required to make it. So I hopped onto Bricklink, aka did slash game mode creative, and spent about $300 on a bunch of pieces. But while I wait for those, I'm going to make a mechanism that makes this tiny magma cube jump up and down, and this Minecraft set called the Rabbit Ranch has this mechanism that makes one of the rabbits jump up and down too. So I went to Target and bought it. Okay, so basically at the back, there's a little lever that pushes up on this axle when you push down. Did I just spend $35 for the probably most simple mechanism in this video? Yes, but now I own two Minecraft bundles, Bruh. so I'm not complaining. But now I'm going to replicate it for the small Minecraft magma cube. But we don't need this set anymore, so... Drop test. I built it out of dark red and added a small diorama of the nether around it, including this little lava pool using a 2x4 plate with these small holes in it for the axle to go through. And then we can add our little magma cube, and it's done. Wow, that's really satisfying. Now I want to motorize the medium-sized magma cube. I found that if you push up on the axle inside this magma cube with another axle, it lifts the top up and fully extends it. But what will work even better is if I switch out this 3 stud long axle for a 5 stud long one. That way when the magma cube is fully extended, the axle on the end just has to be pushed up to the bottom of the cube. Then I can use a cam mechanism to push the axle up and down repeatedly as this motor turns. We can build a box around the cam, making sure there's enough room for the cam to spin in all directions, and then hook a motor to the front of the build. And since the magma cube is built sideways, I changed out the 4x4 plate on the back for a 2x4 plate so that I can hook it sideways with these snot bricks. Then I tiled it over, hooked the motor up to an IR receiver, and tested it out. Wow, that's actually so cool. Oh, and I also switched out the cam for this round piece so it ran smoother. Now that the two small magma cubes have leveled up their jumping abilities, I want to build a silverfish, and then motorize it so that it moves side to side like this. Now, you're probably wondering why I'd want to make a silverfish of all mobs. It's small, annoying, and usually forgotten about. Well, silverfish are an ancient creature destined to guard and protect the ender portal from the player, who has ruthlessly killed and slaughtered all the silverfish's hostile mob brethren in order to open the portal. Just kidding, they are just small and the motion will look cool in LEGO, that's literally it. My idea for this build is to build the silverfish four stud long sections so that I can control each one separately and make them do some sort of wave motion. So I started with the head and worked my way back. I also added some blocks sticking out to act like all the spine silverfish have in the game. Okay, now that we are finished, we have a not very intact LEGO Minecraft silverfish. Top comment gets to decide what he gets named. Also, for some reason, it looks like a seal oh, no, if no, I put no, the head upside no. down and put it here. Okay, no. now that the to be decided named seal verfit, <laughs> sorry, is built, we need to make a mechanism to make it swim back and forth. And yes, I know silverfish don't swim, that's just what I'm calling this motion. This isn't going to be as simple as a lever mechanism or even a camshaft like I used for the medium sized magma cube. Instead, I need to make each section of silverfish get pushed and pulled back and forth at a slight offset to each piece next to it. Let's start with a 32 by 32 base plate, which will give us just the right amount to fit the silverfish. Then I'm going to try and use these crank pieces powered by a bunch of the same size gears to push and pull the silverfish sections. I built a long beam to hold all the gears, and in order to make them all turn in the same direction, there's a single small gear in between each bigger one. Then I can offset each crank by a couple of gear teeth so that the whole mob isn't moving together. I kept building for hours and finally got to a point where I could test it out. I'll need to build an entire flat space underneath the silverfish to support each beam, but the motor isn't strong enough to power that many gears while also pushing and pulling the weight of silverfish. I tried adding another motor on the end, but they don't rotate perfectly in sync and it looks bad, which means back to the drawing board. My next plan of action after a couple seconds of thought is to use a horizontal axle to turn large gears that push and pull technic beams. Yes, I know that sounds really complicated, you're just gonna have to wait and see. The one major problem with this plan though is because yes, 
There just has to be a major problem, is that if I put every gear on the driven axle, the beam will cross through the axle and won't be able to turn. So instead of putting those gears on the main axle, I put smaller ones on it and then built these little assemblies to hold larger axles that won't have to deal with the central axle getting in the way. That was a lot of axles. At first I didn't space each gear right in relation to each section of Silverfish, but I went back and fixed it so that all the beams were centered with each section. Then I added these inverted Technic pinhole pieces to each section of Silverfish and started building a base for the mob to sit on. It needs to have these gaps in it so that each beam can run through it, so I used a bunch of long plates and then tiled it over so it's smooth. Then I used some pillars and panel pieces to raise it to the right height. Okay, it's almost time to test it out, but in order to make it the right speed, I need to use the same infrared receiver and a controller. Okay, moment of truth. Okay, it works, but there's one small issue I need to fix, like the fact that some of the large gears need to be shifted slightly so there's more variation in the movement between each section, which I fixed pretty fast. And to finish it up, I want to add a front wall out of these dark gray bricks. With that finished, here's the finished model, and it works pretty well. It's very satisfying. Okay, that's the first two magma cubes and a silverfish complete, but now it's time to begin the final magma cube. My bricklink orders have finally arrived. Okay, that's about 2,500 parts, and now I'm gonna start. But as I sat down to build my 32 by 32 magma cube, I realized something. 2,500 pieces may be a lot, but I definitely underordered on bricks and probably got just the right amount of plates. But logic says that these, sadly, are not equal to these, so I decided to save myself the struggle of starting all over and just went with a 16 by 16 magma cube instead. So I got to work. Okay, so here's the first layer done, and it's probably a good time to tell you how I'm going to make this whole thing work. These are rail pieces, and these are the inverse of that piece that I bought in this rare yellow color to match the core of the magma cube. I'm going to build the whole thing sideways so that the rails will be vertical, meaning each outer section can move up and down. I also ordered a bunch of black and dark red inverted 2x2 tiles to smooth out the back and really go the extra mile. I added two rail pieces sticking up by one stud so that the core can raise two studs when the magma cube is lifted up. Then I built the second layer of magma cube as well as the core. I used a reference photo of a rail mob and replicated each pixel one by one with these 2x2 two two tiles on the front and the inverted ones on the back. That part was so satisfying to tile. And then it was onto the final layer. Just like this little magma cube that started the idea for this whole video, the top layer needs to be twice as thick as the rest in order to make it work well. So I started building up the layers of bricks and got to the eyes. I ordered some of these orange and yellow tiles that I've been using for the core of the magma cube that are just the right colors to make the eyes as well. Then I finished the top of the outer layer, worked my way to the top of the core of the magma cube, also adding these inverted rail pieces sticking out of the top with stoppers to make the magma cube top lift to the perfect height and not come up. And with that done, if I lift up on the top of the magma cube, it actually works. I just built three different working Minecraft magma cubes of increasing sizes and a moving silver fish named, well, you decide. And I think it would be fitting to end this video with drop test.